We are introducing SharePoint application permissions. You may have heard me refer to this in the past as resource-specific consent, which we found to be a little bit of a confusing, overloaded term. So I'm going to try and move quickly through my demo so David has some time to close the call in just a few minutes. Uh, so I've got two applications set up here. One is called Demo App. One is called Demo App List Items. I have given those applications two different scopes. Uh, demo app has the new lists.selectedOperations.selected, and demo app list items has list items.selectedOperations.selected. So this is very similar to the site selected, but due to new graph uh, naming requirements for scopes, we've had to put this uh, third piece in there. So just ignore that and think about it. list selected, list items selected. And then uh, this is all in PPE. We've had a bit of a, a hiccup in getting things deployed. Um, so I'll be demoing here in PPE. But I want to show you real quick, I've got some code here. Uh, I've set up PNPJS. You may have heard of that. Uh, and all of these operations are going to be done in delegated mode. So I'm going to do uh, try and do a quick request here and show you all that there's no tricks uh, once this gets going. And so what this is going to do, what SharePoint application permissions allow us to do is grant applications permissions, not just at the site level anymore, but also to lists and specific list items or files. And so in this case, I'm going to just uh, refresh this page, make sure we're doing what we think we're doing. I'm going to hit start. And you can see, as expected, we get a 403 because if we look back at our application here, it has this scope, but this scope itself does not actually grant any permissions to the application. It can't access anything until we add it to a specific list. So I've got up here in my uh, thing, just trust me that this is the GUID of a list. And on the end of it now, we have a new endpoint here, slash permissions. I'm going to do a post to that with this request body. And I think, can I make this... It won't really get any bigger, um, but this is my application ID, and I want to go in here and just double check, uh, get the right application ID because I have two of them here, and go up here and get our application ID, and we're going to do a post request, and we get back that application permissions there, and if we do now back here do a get on that same endpoint, we will see our application is now has permissions uh, that we gave it to this list. Uh, so let's go back to our application and we're just gonna run our little test app and wait a minute, access denied. Well, hold on. Oh, I know, I'm delegated. I'm using delegated authentication in this case. So delegated authentication is always the intersection of user and application permissions. And the user I'm testing with has no access to the site. I bring this up because this is a common source of uh, confusion or uh, challenges for users. Why doesn't this app have access? Because it's running and delegated and the user itself does not have access. So I'm gonna add my test user. Trust me that that's my test user to the thing. And if I come back here to my application, if everything goes well, hey, it did go well. So we now have access to that list and we can see here's my big list. Um, and so that's, you know, great. That's as we would expect. I've got access to that list. And I can then, if I go into my code, of course, read all the items in that list. Uh, so let me spin this back up. And so giving uh, this application permissions, it works uh, very similar to how user permissions work. So permissions are inherited up and down the tree. You can break inheritance. These application permissions do break inheritance. And that's a very important thing to remember because all the service limitations and so forth would still apply. And so we've read our items, and here this list has thousands and thousands of items. We've gotten a bunch of them. Uh, that's really great. So let me very quickly then, and I'm sorry for rushing through this, but we had just the time we had here at the end. So what I'm going to do You can is take some extra time, time Patrick. I can, we can stay late. over to our uh, list items application. So I've switched over to that. And here's my list call. So I've set the code back up to be the list call. And we're going to start this up. And we will go back to our page. 
And we will wait for our page to load here. And we will wait for our page to load here. Our little app is just, there we go. All right, come on. So if we start, we will, uh, as expected, should get our access denied because we have not added the application to anything yet, right? Same issue. We haven't, the selected scopes themselves do not grant any access themselves. So we are going to bounce over to our browser window where I'm an admin. And on the same list, I am going to do a post and I am going to grab the ID for our application here. And I am going to run that. And everything's worked great. I know my user has access to the site. So let's see here. Um, we'll hit start. And we all right, interesting. Something in my testing has not worked because I have gone too quickly. So this should be a 403. It's the list items scope uh, does not actually grant uh, permissions to uh, the list itself. So that would have been a 403. Um, and instead of trying to debug that, I think it's more important here to show you that now items have a, so I will say that step I just did worked earlier. So this is something with, uh, um, just trying to go through here too quickly. So lists, items to permissions, I'll run that item not found. Do I not have, sorry, one second, big list. Item ID two. I think our demo might be falling apart a little bit here. What if we get get so we get an item per missions. That's is there stuff on the end there I'm not seeing? Well boo. Um so we are beta. Apologies here for this. Anytime you try and move a little too quickly. Is item two still there? We haven't deleted it. Let's try item three. We're not getting it back. So I am gonna just go back and talk through this a little bit. So what you would have seen is you would have the ability then to set the permissions on a specific list item. And then what we would have seen had everything gone smoothly in the demo, you would be able to enumerate the items in that list and you would get back only the item or items that you had specific permissions to, just as if you were a user with uh, access to only a limited set of items. And then as well, you would be able to get the items that you had access to uh, by ID. So that would all work as expected. So I will uh, pause there for questions. I'm sorry the demo kind of fell apart there in the middle. Um, I will uh, definitely record this and have a video out uh, where things go. But what this really opens up is a set of scenarios where you could have your AI applications have access to a single document library to read through uh, all of the items uh, in that library for its uh, grounding data. You could have uh, uh, set up scenarios where applications might have access to a single file or list. And we'll be working, uh, now that we've got this rolling out, we'll be uh, working with our partners to ensure that, um, that uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, it, there'll be scenarios where these are supported natively within installation. So you'll be able to install teams uh, that will have, will use the selected permissions to the sites they're created. You'll be able to have uh, file pickers that when you pick a file can on the fly grant access to an application. Uh, so we're very excited about these scenarios and bringing this feature out. <laughs>